In our daily lives, we find ourselves surrounded by plastics. Plastic milk jugs are a prime example. In days gone by, when you had milk delivered, you had a glass milk jug, and that was returnable. Paper milk cartons covered with wax are biodegradable, and those are still in plentiful supply. But a lot of milk is sold in plastic containers, and this is not biodegradable. You throw it in the trash, it goes into a landfill, it's not going to break down in that landfill. So you might want to think about ways that you can use up plastic milk jugs in the garden. Now the National Gardening Association in their recent issue of their magazine came out with tips for using up milk jugs and we want to show you a few of those and give you some ideas for how to use them in your own garden. The first one and the most obvious is to cut out the bottom and place it over a transplant in the soil as a mini greenhouse in the fall or the spring, mostly in the spring for planting. You're setting out new transplants. Leave the lid off, it'll still have frost protection but it will have a vent for hot temperatures during the day. Another use for the bottom is to cut the bottom off and cut a slit around it and put that around new transplants as a cutworm collar. And you want to work that down into the soil where at the top of it's in fairly good contact with the soil so the cutworm doesn't have room to get up in there and get around the side of the plant. Another use is to make a scoop out of a milk jug. This can have many uses. You can use it to scoop up potting soil or compost or any other material. Bird seed is also handy. And then you can use the bottom, leave the lid off, and use it to fill up pots, or you can use it to fill your bird feeder with bird seed. Speaking of the birds, some way you can help them is to make a bird feeder. Now this one has just had a hole cut in two sides of it, a stick poked through a smaller hole on either side for a perch, we can fill the bottom of that with bird seed. And then to keep the squirrels away, you can simply mount a pie pan on the top. And as they come down the string in the tree, that will help foil them. Or you can string this between, or along, a length of rope between two limbs. And that will keep the squirrels away as well. On my hip here, I have another use for milk containers. And that is if you're out berry picking. Picking blackberries or strawberries, you can put them directly into the milk jug and just take it off your belt and dump them into a container when you reach the end of the row saves a lot of extra effort. The last one was what I thought was a really nifty idea and this one was sent to the National Gardening Association by an Oklahoman. Her name is Barbara Z. Shang. She lives in Salisaw. In fact, she's an herb grower there. And she's figured out a way to pick apples using a milk jug. And she took a milk container and cut a finger-like pattern on the top and that helps catch the apples. To reach that area, she poked a hole in the side and ran it through the handle on a cane pole so you can get up high near the apple tree. And then Barbara put holes around the side and sewed a muslin sack to it. And we've just put a plastic sack on here for purposes of demonstration. But you get the idea. You can get those apples or pears or peaches that are up high. They'll drop into the sack and won't be bruised. It's probably a good idea to take the first few of them out each time you pick so that the remaining ones that come in won't get bruised on top of the others. Well, those are some great ideas for using up plastic in the garden. Just let your imagination run wild. Also, if you use pop containers, the two liter kind, those can be used in similar ways in your garden. But it's a good way to get double duty out of plastics. One of the most obvious materials we can use for recycling in the garden is paper. But it can go way beyond just newspaper, and the uses are almost endless. And right here, I'm papering a path between our strawberry beds. This is an area that we frequently have to weed, and we don't want the strawberry varieties to grow together. So a good way to keep them separated is to have a well-mulched pathway. Now, I've started off with some grocery sacks. Most any kind of paper will do. You might find, if you analyze the trash in your home, that the majority of it that you throw away is paper-based and a lot of this can be used. Grocery sacks can be recycled into the garden, newspapers, also anything with color inks is fine. Now, years ago, we used to worry about slick paper like this that had a lot of colored ink because it had heavy metals in it. Well, that's not the case now. They've cleaned up the inks. They're perfectly safe to use in the garden. So what you can do is just lay them out and layer them as you go. There's a comic section. 
lay out some more newspaper and try to make the sections fairly thick. And then the next step is to put some mulch on top to help hold them down. Now our neighbors were throwing away this pine straw. They'd raked it up, put it in plastic sacks, and put it out for the garbage to haul off the landfill. But I'm just going to dump that out here. One thing I might mention is that many people are recycling paper into their gardens. In fact, you might be interested to know that the U.S. Embassy in Moscow shreds all of its paper for obvious reasons and then puts it in their garden for mulch. So they found it's a good use and that it does biodegrade. Now you can use almost any organic mulch on top of the paper and what this does, not only does it weigh it down, but it also will help hold in moisture, helps keep, keep that paper in contact with the soil and will help it to decompose. And we also have some sawdust back here that some neighbors brought us and I'll pile that on top as well. By spring, the newsprint down below will be decomposed but I'll have a nice thick layer of mulch that weeds won't be able to grow through and I'll have a very tidy pathway on which I can walk to harvest my strawberries. We found another use for newspapers here in our garden. This side of our garden is sort of a service area. This is where we bring wheelbarrows full of grass clippings to dump after through mowing the lawn. Also back here we have an old coal frame that's been filled with mulch and canna bulbs to store them through the winter time. So it's not an area that gets a lot of attention and the soil has tended to become compacted. But we'd like to beautify it a little bit by putting in a flower bed. And here's a quick easy way to go if you have a site on your property that has heavy clay soil that you don't want the backbreaking task of digging up completely to make a bed. You can use newspapers and they'll decompose very well under this mulch. Now the way we started out was we outlined the shape of our bed that we want to make. You can do this for flowers or vegetables or what have you. Outline the shape with garden hose and then we went along with a, a spading fork and just edged it to, to make an edge or define the edge around here for weeding purposes. Now on top of that we're laying newspapers and then a lot of mulch on top that will help, help decompose the newspapers and we can plant directly into. Now this method will work very well even in a lawn area. Now if you have a Bermuda grass lawn it may not work so well because the stolons and rhizomes of the Bermuda grass will probably creep in from the edges. But if you have a fescue or a zoysia lawn and you just don't want the backbreaking task of breaking all that up you can make a bed right on top of the existing lawn. Now, I did this at my own house last spring. The neighbors thought we were nuts, but it worked. We built a, a blueberry bed right on top of our zoysia lawn and built it up about, oh, eight inches high with mulch. Planted the blueberries directly into the mulch and then put some drip irrigation on top and it's worked just fine. If you have a lot of newspapers, you can lay them down as your first layer of mulch and being on the bottom, they'll decompose into the soil as they get moistened in the soil through the winter. When you plant next spring, the plant roots will be able to grow down and grow right through the paper and you will have gotten rid of all this newsprint. Now you want to put a pretty thick layer down. Four or five sections of the newspaper will work just fine. And you can see how I'm working along the edge here and overlapping it. And the next step is just to backfill with the soil that we've dug out around our edge. That will help hold down the papers. By the way, do this on a calm day. I'm just going to do part of it to show you. Then the next step is to start putting down some organic mulch that you can plant into. What we're starting off with is some compost. We just brought over a cart full from our compost bin. Layer that on top. It'd be good to have a good four inches of that for starters. 
That will help decompose the newspapers. Then on top of that, you could put some material that needs further decomposition, such as straw or pine needles. This will further help build your soil. These are some pine needles here. Then on top of that, you could layer some more green material, such as grass clippings. And the nitrogen from the grass clippings, if they're fresh green clippings, will help decompose the pine straw. So you can just layer these materials on there, or you can mix them all together before you put them on the bed. As you can see, the level here is quite a bit lower than the level here. I've got about six or eight inches of solid material to plant into next spring. And you can plant annual flowers directly into the mulch by spring. If you have something that's a little deeper rooted, such as a shrub, you can open up an area. And if you still have some newspaper there, just take a pocket knife and cut an X and plant directly into that. And the plants will do just fine. And over the years, the heavy compacted clay soil down under there will start to loosen up because it's not an area that you'll be walking on anymore. And you can add to the mulch layer as you wish as the plants grow and have a good healthy environment for your plants to grow and also a good way to get rid of all your newspapers. <laughs>